I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, Charlie Thornton, uh, iconic engineer that uh, has uh, uh, made an impact on our industry for decades and decades. Uh, we're thrilled that we're able to bring Charlie back and speak with us. Uh, he has an incredibly innovative, creative uh, design concept that embraces uh, uh, the con construction process and, and is very safe and efficient. And as an example of the kind of collaboration uh, we've uh, espoused to. Charlie, please. So thank you for inviting me. And uh, what Carrie should have done on that successful collaboration was just take out all the columns. Because that's what I did. That's what we did. The TGE system does not have any columns. And I'm going to explain why. But first, I'm going to talk about a couple of other things. One of our problems is, when I went to engineering school, this was the code. OK? That's the ACI code. I think it's, 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 it's not, it's, I counted the pages. OK, this, the first 14 pages are not included. I don't know why, but the fact of the matter is we don't need codes that are 500 pages. We really don't, OK? All it is is excuses for engineers to hang their hat on a decision they've made when if you just stick to first principles and, and good structural engineering, OK? How many structural engineers are in the audience? Good. Good. So there's a lot of nice things out there in the world. And one of them has sort of missed the construction industry. You want to call it lean manufacturing? You want to call it lean Six Sigma? Has anybody ever heard of material resource planning? Couple. Has anybody heard of an enterprise resource system? Why do you know about it? OK. Boeing is an enterprise resource center. The construction industry is a disaster. Everybody at Boeing, for the most part, talks to each other. And all their subcontractors are all part of the same collaborative enterprise resource system. The construction industry has to get there. And PRO is probably the way to do it, OK? ACI's problem, let me just go back one. Lean manufacturing and enterprise resourcing and material resourcing is eliminating waste on labor and eliminating waste on material. And guess what? The ACI cast in place post tension structural system is a total waste of material. It weighs 300 pounds a square foot. It's got 300 pounds of cubic yard of rebar in it. And you, we can discuss that. And we can argue it, OK? But Kerry and I worked together on a lot of things. And he told me once that a cast-in-place concrete post-tension structure has about 12 pounds per square foot of structural steel and rebar, OK? And someone else said rebar is going for a dollar a pound. And that's about the average rate that, that we use. Hmm? Yeah. Right. How many people design cast in place post tension concrete buildings, tall buildings? Do you agree that they weigh 300 pounds a square foot of dead load? I, I, I think if it's done, if it's done by CKC, I think you're right. If it's done by XYZ, I think you're wrong. Anyway. So take out all the columns. What happens? The entire weight of the building compresses the core. The entire weight of the building compresses and pre-stresses the core. There are no tensile stresses in our cores. There are no uplift, net uplift, and no tensile stresses. Under ACI 14, chapter 14, the one I use, which is 400 pages, OK, that means I can use ACI <coughs> minimum steel. If there's no tensile stresses in a concrete wall, and there's no uplift in a concrete wall, 
There's no tensile uplift on the foundations. I save a fortune. So why doesn't everybody else take the columns out? Because they don't have any balls and brains. That's the problem in this industry, okay? People are afraid to try anything new. Because, and, and the subcontractors in, the Amer in America can't do anything they haven't done before. They just blank you out. Okay, so what do we have? We have a vertically integrated supply chain of 30 contractors that are part of TTG, and they supply every single component of the building. Does that sound like collaboration? Cervez Steel does our fabricated structural steel. Berlin Steel does our erection. Uh, exterior facades, okay? So here's what we do. We basically put in mat foundations under our cores. Two buildings in Bangalore, India, had set at seven cores each. 14 cores, 621,000 square feet, 10 stories. The first building was estimated to be $250 million in concrete. We did the first building for $134 million. Does that sound possible? It's true. And instead of 38 months, we did it in 21 months. Does that sound possible? We did it. The second building, which is identical, was 110 million instead of 250 million. And it was 14 months or 12 months instead of 36 months. Intel was the owner. Intel saved an absolute fortune. And at the end of the projects, Jeff Grillo, head of worldwide construction, came to me and said, you know, Charlie, I think your system is the future. I think it's the way to go and I'm joining you. I said, oh, that's, that's nice. It's a pretty nice compliment when the head of worldwide construction, your client, says to you, I'm joining you. So Jeff Grillo owns one third of the company. Daniel Esposa, who's the general contractor, owns one third of the company. And I own, I own one third of the company. Why did I give up so much? I'm 83 and I needed a succession plan. You think anybody's gonna say, so how long are you going to be around, Charlie? Well, I got two guys that are in their 50s, right? So why not? So we now have 4 million square feet of projects in the United States, okay? We've got $500 million worth of financing coming from GIA. We just got a, a guy named Larry Mizell. Does anybody know Larry Mizell? He's a very wealthy build, home builder, and he owns... Uh, Coleridge, like like Samuel Coleridge, the, the poet. And he's just bought Evolve and we're starting construction in about a month. Okay. Our price to do 400,000 square feet of a six-story podium, parking and retail, and two towers, 18 stories each, our bid, design build with our vertically integrated supply chain, was 120 million, and a cast in place concrete PT tower was 145. You think people are going to look at that saving and say, why don't we try this? So I'm here to tell you all that there's a better way to build buildings. And I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you all to be thinking, thinking about what I said. What happens when I take all the columns out? How many people remember their days in sophomore year in engineering school? Do you remember the K-E-R-N? The kern? The kern? You keep the resultant underneath the foundation of a building within the middle third. It doesn't have any net overturning or left uplift. Right? You take a building and you put a wind load or a seismic load on it. And you, and you configure the size of the mat under the core so that the result is within the middle third of the footprint of the mat. And you don't have any nut uplift on the foundation. And that's what we do. So on a 40-story building, we have 8-inch walls. 
and we have 80 pounds per cubic yard of rebar in our core. Our floor system is not an 8 inch 100 pound per square foot slab. It's 6 inch autoclaved aerated concrete weighing 26 pounds a square foot. It's got a 2 hour fire rating and it doesn't need any soffit or treatment on the top. I'm sorry friends, but it's not a concrete slab but aerated autoclave concrete is in the ACI code. You know that? Carrie? It's in the code. Actually, I did not know that. It's in a separate section that basically. So when, when I go in to meet with a, a building official, the first question they ask is, does it meet all the codes? And I say, absolutely meets the ACI code, International Building Code, all the architectural codes, everything. They said, well, we don't really care about means and methods. Yay. We don't really care whether you put the roof up first or the bottom floor up last. That's means and methods. So guess what we do? We put the entire floor together, just like Seco was showing, all those larger and larger sections that they're trying to do, we put the whole floor together on the ground. So let's take a tower that's 130 feet long and 60 feet wide with two cores that are 9 by 20, corridor down the middle, we'll thick, the walls are 8 inches thick, the rebar is 80 pounds a cubic yard. I put the exterior wall on, on the ground, I put the whole building together on the ground. Not, there's not one tower crane on the site, and everything's lifted with strand jacks. Okay? And it is the safest system you can build. The International Brotherhood of Ironworks are coming to meet with me in Maryland, where I live, and they want to basically invest in our projects because everybody comes home alive. We had one recorded incident in 5 million person hours in Bangalore, India. And how many people die on almost every construction site in India? Sometimes it's everybody. The whole damn thing collapses. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. And I'm, I'm a disruptive innovator. And I have balls and brains that I'm willing to go out and try to do these things. And let me tell you, it ain't easy. The doubting Thomases of this construction industry. Well, we haven't done that before. But what? You think Sapuji Palanji, one of the largest EPC contractors in India that was part of Tata? You think they ever saw this system before? And Intel's facilities guys, industrial engineers, we went over with them and we interviewed three contractors. And this contractor that had never slip formed a core before, had never used strand jacks, okay, and put these two 621,000 square foot buildings and basically were able to fit 10% more people in the building because when you don't have any columns, your head count goes up by 10%. And to a computer company with about you know, 621,000 square feet, if you can get 10% more people, dry lab tables in that room, it's gold. So our projects are right now in, in Seattle, we have a 1800 Terry, which is 420 feet tall. I've got designs for 1000 foot tall buildings. And there's still no tension stresses in our core. Because we size the core so that there's no net tension in the building. So any questions? Challenge me. Cantilevers. We cantilever the, so, so here's, here's the core. It's 30 feet wide. The candle, cantilever is 25 feet, right? So 50 plus 30 is, is, is 80, okay? I put super, uh, serviceability posts in the exterior wall at the tip of each cantilever. They are four by four by a quarter inch back to back angles and they're fireproof and they're in the exterior wall. They start at the roof and they stop at the second floor. The core is creeping. Two little four by four angles. 
if we connect them to terra firma, they're going to buckle because a 174 foot core is going to shorten significantly due to creep shrinkage and right axial compression and stuff like that. <laughs> so we, we're basically showing, and, and guess who we're selling to? Developers. We are not selling to architects. Because architects are just like the rest of everybody else in this industry. I haven't done one like that before. The architect on Bangalore was shop architects out of New York, one of the hottest design architects in the world. So architects love it. No columns, they love it. Where do you spend most of your time coordinating a design and a construction collaboration? Making the columns go away. What, what did Carrie just show you? Right? So eliminate them and keep the cores in compression. And, I, and I'm not bullshitting you. This, this, run the numbers. We'll, we'll run them for you. We use E-tabs. We use uh, Risa 3D. We use SAP 90. We're base isolating everything on the West Coast. Carrie was really interesting to see what happens to a, to a 400 tall tower if I base isolate it using earthquake protection systems. Does anybody know what base isolation is? Have you ever done it? Okay, you take an R factor in the structural engine, uh, seismic code, you use an R factor of one. Now everything else goes away. There's no ductile design. It's like you're designing a building in Seattle or San Francisco for wind only. You know what that does to the cost of all the ductile detailing? And does anybody know what happened in Turkey, in Adania, where, where 100,000 people or whatever died in that earthquake? Earthquake protection system in Turkey had zero damage. AC, ASCE 7 now has continued functionality in its code. Continued functionality means that there will be zero, some small percentage of damage to a maximum credible earthquake. And that's what we get. Does anybody know who EPS, or Earthquake Protection Systems, is? They basically own the triple pendulum damper, which basically get, gets rid of three frequencies. It's really fascinating. So anyway, I mean, the, the, the purpose of, of, of me coming to this speech, besides sort of helping Carrie and Phil and the rest of the group here get people excited about collaborating, and I'm an absolute believer in design build and everything we do with TGE top down, it's all design build. And we can take, you, you send me a building that, that you're designing and it's not penciling out and within three weeks, I'll give you a guaranteed max. And it'll be backed up by a, a, a vertically integrated supply chain. Can anybody else do that in three weeks? with contractor input, subcontractor input, I doubt it. They all understand the system, and they've been working with me now for 10 years. That's how long it takes to get a disruptive innovation into the American construction industry. I'm not tired yet. 